the New York Alumni Network is really happy to um, it, to, to participate this evening and, and, and talk about uh, for a little while about some lessons um, that we've experienced in hopes that uh, that new graduates will uh, will be able to, to pick up um, pick up some pointers from from our team. Um, so uh, uh, as Megan mentioned, I, I graduated in the class of 2009. I currently work for uh, Brookfield Properties Retail Division. Um, and uh, I really love the panel to, uh, to introduce themselves. But before we go around the room, we'll kind of talk about um, how we'll set up this evening. And that's, you know, we'll start off with a little bit of background information. Then the panel will um, have some questions and we'll have some nice discussion. And as Megan mentioned, if at any point in time, if you're interested in interrupting or or engaging uh, any of our panelists, please type something in the chat. I'll monitor it and uh, make sure that, uh, that that you get uh, recognized. Um, so, uh, without further ado, uh, Mr. Christopher Hearn, I'd love for you to uh, to introduce yourself. Awesome. Thanks, Matt, and and thanks, Megan, and um, really the entire Xanias community for for letting myself and the other panelists take part in this. I'm really excited. Um, I'm Chris Ahern. I am a member of the class of 2008. I graduated with a BA in International Relations and dual certificates of study in Spanish and Latin American studies. And I am, I am now living on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, where, uh, and I'm for the last five and a half years or so, I've worked as Director of Partnerships for Reach the World, which is a global education nonprofit serving learning communities throughout the country. Thanks so much, Chris. Uh, I'll, I'll ask Jen to introduce herself next. All right, thanks, Matt. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Megan. Um, again, very excited to be here. Um, I am, I graduated in the class of 2009. Um, I moved to New York City. Um, uh, recently, actually just moved back to Boston, but for the past five years, I was the patient care director of an inpatient um, medical surgical step down nursing unit at um, Wild Cornell Medical Center. So um, again, excited to be here and to talk more. Thanks so much, Jen. Sammy? Hi, good evening. Sammy Calhoun. I'm uh, probably the oldest person on this call, which is always <laughs> scary. I uh, graduated class of 07 as a theology major and uh, currently have been working at Amazon, a division of Amazon AWS for the last six months. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Sammy. And Matt? Yeah, Matt Slater uh, graduated uh, from 2008 from St. A's uh, with the, uh, in politics is our focus. Um, went on to get an MPA from Marist College in public administration. Uh, spent uh, over a decade in the state legislature on a staff level and uh, decided to jump into the ring and run for office in 2019. Got elected uh, town supervisor of my hometown. Uh, about uh, 38,000 people uh, in our town and um, looking forward to the conversation tonight. Excellent. Well, thanks. Thanks to uh, all of you. And, and we'll just kind of jump right in. And I think, you know, when we really talk about the lessons that were learned from 2008 and, and where we're going today, you know, we're looking at the impact of the global financial crisis on, on the job market in the same way that we're looking at you know what what COVID nineteen and and the rest of of the you know financial fallout as a result of of lockdowns and shutdowns has, has done to the current job market. Um, it, I think it's kind of important to note a few differences. Um, you know, un unfortunately, some of the um, the disproportionate effect on jobs has skewed towards younger folks this this go around than, than in the uh, global financial crisis, um, which makes the uh, the initial entry a little bit more challenging into the job force. I think um, one thing that is very, uh, very much lined up uh, aligned or, or synergistic is that, um, you know, uh, the volume of competition uh, for things like internships, which perhaps didn't exist in this past year, but um, also were very, very competitive in the same global financial crisis time. Um, uh, th those are two things that are quite alike. And, you know, additionally, um, while middle mid-level 
uh, management positions were far more affected during the global financial crisis that actually had a cascading credentialism effect on initial uh, in, in, initial entry uh, roles um, around the same time that we were graduating. Now, I think this panel is pretty indicative of the fact that these are not insurmountable issues, nor are they perpetual problems of the economy. Um, but you know, I think it's uh, one great positive thing that that uh, that will come out of this is that um, you know not every uh, not every career hiccup not every um, economic interruption uh, means defeat for someone who's initially entering the workforce. Um, I think as we kind of grow in our conversation, you'll see that in each one of these panelists' sort of discussion. Um, I, I think it's valuable to note that. This, this discussion is happening on a national level. Even it, we were just chatting as recently as this past weekend in the Wall Street Journal. There's a great article about, um, about employment as a recent graduate. Um, and you know, it's, uh, it's great that we're, we're focusing on this at the same time. But you know, one thing that um, it was different about the global financial crisis were the types of roles that were growing as the, the financial crisis was rebounding. Um, finance was not one that was uh, supremely, um, you know, opening up as a, as the financial crisis was waning. In contrast, today, uh, according to um, Indeed and uh, the Wall Street Journal, you're seeing tech, financial services, education, and professional services as growth opportunities within the market. So. Um, you know, there's a lot of different new and interesting different types of roles that are coming out. Um, but with that being said, I'd like to really kind of open up the discussion to the rest of our team here um, and, and really kind of uh, open up with a question to all of you. So please feel free to unmute and jump in first. Um, and that's, you know, when you were graduating, as you were approaching graduation, did you really have an idea of what you wanted to do from a career perspective at that point in time? I can jump in and say the obvious. Um, uh, since I had a bachelor's of science in nursing, I knew that I wanted to be a nurse and that was straightforward. Um, However, I always thought that I would go and maintain the clinical pathway and become a nurse practitioner. Um, you know, and I'll talk a little bit about my path later on, but um, uh, the big takeaway for me has always been that, um, you know, while it's good to have goals and have a five-year plan and everything, um, keeping the doors open and saying yes to different opportunities has, led me in a completely different um, part of nursing and nursing administration, healthcare administration that I never thought that I would be even interested in. So um, the answer is yes and no. That's great feedback. Um, yeah, that's it, when, you're, when you're walking out with that BSN, kind of the world is your oyster, but there's a lot of different factors that come into play. Um, Chris, what about you? So I, and, um, I wanted to work in the nonprofit space, especially because I, as I was finishing up my degree, I, I had an internship with the Greater Manchester Red Cross, and I was also a part of the of campus EMS uh, at St. Anne's. So I, I was really feeling I was being pulled toward the, the sort of emergency response, healthcare support, um, community response side of things. And um, I, Put out a lot of resumes but not nothing came back right about then and so i took the first job that i could which was for a recent college grad excellent it was at harpoon brewery working at the out of their visitor center in boston i mean it was wonderful but uh, i only lasted a year before i i pivoted to getting a graduate degree in education and and now I'm actually I'm in nonprofit work and I'm a nonprofit manager and I've worked all, all over the country doing that. So I got there, but I needed it to have a little bit of a of a sidetrack before I could really get to where my pathway is today. That's awesome. I'm super jealous. Uh, I don't know. I like a UFO. That's all I can say. Sammy, what, what about you? trying to come off mute here. Um, I was, I think I had a slightly different experience. I really thought I was going to go to law school or 
um, just be a professional student. And I, I don't want to say that I was burned out, but when I got to May of my graduation year, I was, it just, it didn't excite me in the way that it had, you know, when I was applying to colleges and I was looking at programs. And so I felt really dejected and moved home, <laughs> moved in with my parents and then, you know, proceeded to, to look for jobs and go on interviews. And one of the things that was pointed out to me in some of those interviews was you know, I had an interesting background, but not a lot of business experience or corporate experience. Um, like others, I had worked um, in a nonprofit throughout college, um, had an internship in a nonprofit. And so I really took that feedback to heart, even though I didn't end up getting a job at that company. But the recruiter, I thought, just was so well-spoken and just was so kind to give me that feedback. I ended up getting an internship for that summer at an insurance company and then applied again uh, kind of later in the fall slash winter and, and moved right into technology. So I, I don't know that I would have had the path that I had. I didn't I just certainly didn't chart it, um, but was really open to that feedback. Um, and that's not something that we always are in that frame of mind, um, but I have really tried to use as much feedback as I can as a gift, right? Because certainly there's times where we, we want to know how we're perceived and what we're doing and folks aren't always um, able to share that. No, that's great feedback. I, I relate to that quite a bit because as a politics major, I joined the Army. So it's a whole yeah, different thing. See? Matt, what about you, man? Uh, I actually, um, I was a lucky one because uh, I fell into uh, a job right after, right out of college. Uh, thanks, thanks to one of our fellow alum, uh, Tom DeRosa, uh, who was um, a year, uh, I think he was an 07 grad. And um, uh, he was actually back in New York, uh, working the political scene in New York, uh, moving back to New Hampshire at the time. And, uh, and was able to connect me with some people who were looking to basically fill his position, ironically. Um, so it just uh, turned out to be a perfect fit. Um, and uh, eventually I actually wound up running the office that I entered in, uh, which was pretty cool uh, as a regional director uh, for the assembly. Um, but so a lot of it, I think I had to do with networking. Uh, thankfully I had, you know, Matt, uh, Tom, uh, uh, there to open some doors for me and introduce me to some really important uh, people for my career. Um, and, you know, I think that's a big, uh, you know, uh, component for soon to be grads is make sure that you're, you're networking and you're talking with, you know, fellow, you know, CNAs, grads and, and anyone else for that matter. I mean, I think the networking, especially when it's a, a difficult market uh, is really important because you never know if someone's going to be able to open a door for you and you're going to land a job where you were hoping to get in. And next thing you know, you know, time flies by and, and you're still in the same field doing, you know, doing the work that you wanted to do coming out. So I was one of the lucky ones, though. No, but Matt, you, you keyed on on one thing that I, I kind of wanted to touch on later, but I think it's great that we're kind of going in this direction. And that's, you know, you mentioned networking and, and networking can can have a have a big time effect. And one of those effects may be that, you know, you may need to relocate. Uh, you may need to be open to relocation. Now, Chris, Jen, I know you guys relocated from, from home markets to, to, to further your career. Do either of you want to kind of talk about how that affected your career and how you wanted to, you know, how that, that choice or that ability to relocate made an impact on your career choice? I'll go ahead. Um, so for me, I grew up in Concord, New Hampshire, went to St. A's, was, has, had always been in New Hampshire. So moving to New York was a big step for me. Um, luckily, I had, you know, moved with one of my best friends. But career-wise, um, I think, as I mentioned before, I had always, I, I had started my job in Concord, New Hampshire. I worked a year and a half there out of college. I had applied for an ICU position, something that I had always wanted to do, and I didn't get it because I didn't have enough experience. So, um, you know, like many things. So I moved to New York, um, ended up, uh, my first manager ended up being my manager for the entire 10 years I was there. Um, an amazing person, great mentor. And I think um, I, I was on a unique floor. I was just talking about that. It brought in my perspective. I had a a huge global population, um, patients that I feel that I never would have um, taken care of at, in Concord, New Hampshire. Um, 
you know, good or bad. So it was just, it, it gave me a unique perspective, um, broadened my horizons, and I think led to opportunities in case management and then going into administration that um, I may not have had elsewhere. So really, I mean, I was lucky enough, I didn't have anything tying me down, but I did make the move um, and it was probably the best decision, you know, one of the best decisions of my life. And um, so, you know, and you can always go back to something else. I think that's really important. Don't think that just because you're doing, committing to something for a small period of time that, um, you know, you're, you're stuck to it forever. I still think like that sometimes, but, um, you know, you're always, you know, if you keep your doors open, you'll always find something that works for you and just, you know, what feels right. Yeah, and, and for me, I, uh, so after Harpoon, I, I went back uh, to another New Hampshire university and got my master's at Franklin Pierce uh, in education, and I began working as a teacher. I was lucky enough to actually work in my hometown, which is the opposite of, of the, what you, you put in the prompt, Matt. But uh, it, so I worked as a teacher in my hometown and I loved it. But unfortunately, due to structural challenges within the school, due to um, some, some mismanagement at, at the levels higher than us line educators, um, I saw that it, it wasn't enough to be a good, just to be a teacher, that teachers need support from, from the outside structure. And so I wanted to stay in education. And then I decided to say like, all right, well, I'm just going to put, put resumes out there all over the place. And, and my wife and I, at, at that time, we said, okay, well, there's not really much coming back in the greater Boston area. It was 2013. So the aftershocks of the recession were still there, especially in the, in the nonprofit space. So we came up with a list of places that we thought we could move to that would be best for both of our career trajectories. And that's where we applied to and wherever the first place that would hire me, that's where we were going to go. And it just so happened to be Los Angeles. So I spent two years out in LA uh, doing nonprofit work there. And if, quite frankly, if it wasn't for the fact that I got that opportunity and I worked out there and developed the contacts and networks, et cetera, that I had in LA, I don't think I could have been competitive in New York. Um, I came back because I needed four seasons. Love California, love Los Angeles, but I, I, need, I need winter, spring, summer, fall, not just summer and a little bit of fall. Um, but but that, that's what it was. And so I, I knew what places I wanted to go to or what I was open to, and I knew what places that weren't. And so being able to sort of make that decision to say, this is what's good for me at this time is, is what allowed me to sort of continually advance my career while in the process being able to see what it's like to live kind of all over the place. That's wild. I uh, I had forgotten that you you mentioned to me a few years ago that you'd spent some time in LA. That's uh, that's really cool. It's fantastic. That's you know that that comment about collaborating um, or being collaborative to find what's best for 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 you. Um, that sounds a lot like to me. It sounds a little bit um, like Sammy was talking about a little bit earlier about the gift of feedback. Um, you know, Sammy, if you want to jump in here, maybe talk about, you know, what, what you would look for in a job to lead towards the, towards a career path. Like what, what was it that, you know, really kind of attracted you to a role? Yeah, I think when I was applying for jobs out of college, I was very concerned or I would say hung up on, you know, can I figure out the pay? What are the people like? <laughs> and I, those aren't bad things, but it's it's hard to quantify those until you're actually talking and, and meeting with people who work at the company or, or recently have or worked in that field, um, wherever you're looking. And so I think part of the evolution of my job search when I graduated was, I think uh, someone had mentioned this, maybe a few people, is, is really trying to network. I'm a, a sociable person, but I get, you know, hives when I think of like, oh, do I need to go to a networking event? How am I going to ask this person how like they got to this place? We really don't know each other. And um, another, you know, similar to um, Chris's story, an alum who's a couple years older said, you know, just just talk to people. If you're grabbing drinks with friends, ask them how their interviews have been going. Um, if you're, you know, meeting a, an aunt or uncle at a family event, um, ask them how they, um, their recent company or the place where they're working. And so it just helps, I think, to practice with people who know you and you feel like maybe won't judge you. 
um, for, for asking the questions that you're asking. And that really helped me lean into, I think, a, a more curious nature. I, I found myself looking at different jobs and different companies that I really hadn't thought of before because I was thinking, oh, well, maybe I'm interested in this because of the work that they do or the location or the clients and customers that they serve. So I think really St. A's, regardless of your your field or, or what you graduated with your degree in, St. A's does such a great job nurturing that intellectual curiosity. So that was a long way of saying lean in to asking questions <laughs> and never being satisfied. Such a great point too. I, 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 I'm sorry, I, I, I try, I'm, maybe I'm being too positive in general. Maybe I'm, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm a little bit of a jokester, but um, I love that, that kind of comment about, you know, uh, choosing a job is a little bit more than about the, just the job description um, and, and finding, finding a role that's, uh, that's good for you is a little bit more than the industry it serves. You know, I think quite often, you know, we forget about that portion of, of who the client's the clients are that that are served by that business, um, you know, uh, Matt. Th that's kind of a natural pivot into to what you do. Um, you know, I mean, do you want to talk a little bit about networking? Do you want to talk about what really attracted you into public service like that? Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, the networking piece I think is just really important when you're is for not just your um, coming out of college and trying to get a job, but just for your overall career development. I mean, I, I mean, I go to networking events all the time. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I agree with Sammy. I mean, sometimes they can be a little um, intimidating, but they're really important because you just don't know who you're going to meet and you don't know what doors you're going to open. Um, you know, you don't know what conversations you're going to have. Um, I was at a networking event um, right before COVID hit in, uh, in Albany, where they do a, a big, um, it's called the Association of Towns Conference. So basically like every municipality in the state of New York is there. And, you know, the whole thing turns into a, a, like a three-day networking event with different professionals, different elected officials, and you get a ton of ideas, a ton of resources. Um, and it, it's really helped us, you know, helped me in, in a management, you know, of our, of our municipality. So, you know, from a career development standpoint, that networking is, is, uh, is really crucial. Um, and I liked what Sammy said also about leaning in. Don't, don't be intimidated. Don't be afraid. You know, it's okay to take risks. It's okay to fail. I've, I've run um, political campaigns that have completely crash and burned. Um, and that's okay. Um, you know, you, you lick your wounds and you learn from them. As long as you learn from your failures, they're not a failure. I mean, that's just the, the mindset that I continue to take and continue to have. Um, and, and coupled with, um, you know, that, and again, the networking and just making sure that you know, you're representing yourself well, and you're representing, you know, whatever organization that you're working for at the time well, um, even if you quantify it or, con or consider it as a failure, it's not going to be a failure in other people's eyes. And so that's something that's a, a lesson that I've learned firsthand. Um, and so, you know, when people are going through their first round of, of employment at a college, you know, it's okay to change jobs, it's okay to try different things until you find that that niche and you're going to find that niche. It's just like going really, it's a lot of, you know, in a lot of ways, it's like going to college, you know, you, you kind of bounce around from friends, your freshman year, you're trying to figure it out, trying to figure out, you know, where do you fit in? Um, and honestly, uh, I, I found that, you know, post-college is very, very similar, especially with your career trajectory. I mean, I've had some friends who um, from St. A's, I, you know, my, my roommate from St. A's literally has been in the same job <laughs> since we graduated. Good for him. <laughs> wow. Uh, and then you hear from like Chris and you hear from Matt, you know, you hear from all these other people who, um, you know, we've had to go different, you know, the, the path meanders. I mean, it's not always, it's not going to be a straight shot for everyone. Uh, and that's okay. And just don't be intimidated by it and know that, you know, you've got the tools coming from this great institution to go handle it. You touched on some great things, uh, aside from the fact that like, you're like the fourth person I met at St. A's, uh, Matt and I lived next to each other, my freshman year, his sophomore year. Uh, but, uh, what, what I'd really like to kind of touch on is, is you talked a little bit about, you know, maybe moving from job to job and maybe that first job isn't exactly the most, the, the, the thing that you were idyllically looking at, at the, on your day of graduation. Does anybody have anything in particular that that they focused on for maybe that first job that they wanted to make sure, 
you know, what kind of factors played into taking a job versus applying for a different job? You know, just as an example, for me, it was my ability to cover at, at the very minimum my student loan debt. Um, does anybody else have anything that they kind of felt like was a contributing factor? I was very, I, I was a big um, believer in the benefits package. So I, I am that nerd who like reads over <laughs> whatever your one or two page offer letter was. So I, I don't know. I, I just like, I want really good benefits. I want, you know what I mean? Is, are there stock options? Like, I think you had, you made a good point, Matt. Like it's not, I wouldn't necessarily go in thinking like you want to earn X. I think it's what do I want to use this paycheck for? Is are you, do you really want to you know take a leap and move to a new part of the country? Well, you'll probably need housing. Are you interested in you know maybe staying more local, but you'd be open to an hour, an hour and a half commute? Like you have to kind of factor in. I think what you're willing to sacrifice, and then that helps you really like nail down those core two to three things. I know when I started, it was like ten things. <laughs> I know, I know for me, uh, the, the whole, uh, it was honestly the first job that that would take me um, straight out of college, because like Matt was saying, I had, I had debt. Um, and, and quite frankly, I was, I was, even though I ended up staying there a few more years, I, I didn't really want to live with my parents anymore at the time. Um, that was a big goal for me for that first year is to save enough. But the the thing that I think is is most important that that I learned is was really what happened when I decided to go back and really focus my energies on education. I realized at that point when I made the decision to go to grad school that I I didn't really have any experience, any tangible experience that I could put on a resume working with young people. And so I immediately went and and put in substitute teacher applications at every every school I in the you know in the Cape Ann area where I grew up and I I went and got hired at the local YMCA working as a camp counselor with high school kids as fellow counselors um, because I just I I was lucky enough to still be able to live with my parents and and as long as I could make enough money to get to get those loans continually paid I I needed to get the jobs that would give me the experience that would help me shift into that career. And that paid, that paid me, paid forward so well for me. It, uh, because I was working in informal education and formal education at the same time. I, and so I really got an understanding of, for me, what it, what it meant in, to be applying a, a graduate level education pedagogical lens to those things. And obviously I'm getting a little bit too in the weeds for this, but the idea was that I just was at the time just scrambling and trying to get anything I could to give me that experience. But it turned out to be the best way for me to really understand how to apply this advanced degree that I had also decided to pursue. I think Chris is 100% right. I mean, sometimes, uh, especially when you're coming out of college, you know, uh, think three steps ahead, maybe, because you're not going to, you know, that you're, it's very rare to get that perfect job. That's your dream job right out of school, especially in a competitive market that we're in right now. So just get on base. And, you know, I can tell you from, you know, what I went through, um, I just knew I wanted to be, you know, in the game of government. That's all I knew. And so I got, you know, the literally like the lowest job that they had in the state legislature. And I got my foot in the door. And then you just, you know, to Chris's point, you just find these tangible things that elevate you and then you can get to that next level. Um, so just make sure you're managing those expectations as well, but also don't sell yourself short. Yeah, and I would, I would agree. Um, you know, when you're looking at, as a hiring manager, um, especially with COVID, there have been so many changes. Um, I think it's really important to sort of, you know, as Matt said, not necessarily take the first one, but if you want to take the first job, great. Um, get your, get some experience. Um, you need to have that on your resume. And I think more importantly, what are you doing with your time um, over the course of the last year? Are you, um, you know, speaking from a nurse's perspective, were you working at a vaccine clinic or 
did you take something that's, you know, maybe not your ideal dream job, um, but showing that you're putting, you know, you're open, you're flexible. Um, those are huge qualities that people are looking for. And I think um, just show your enthusiasm and engagement and towards getting a job. Um, and if you, you know, if you can do that and be positive about the whole thing and just do it for a little bit, then you're, you'll go a long way with um, getting the job that you want. Wow, just a series of really, really great comments here because we're talking about, um, we're really, really talking about making the best of this kind of situation and whatever it is that you're getting into. Um, I always feel like uh, the, the best thing that I, I could have done was try and, and get as much leadership experience as humanly possible. Like raise my hand and just volunteer, in whatever job I was doing, just kind of raise my hand and just say, yeah, I'll do that, I'll do that. Um, and eventually somebody, you know, will recognize that you're kind of, you're, you're a, a step apart. Um, and that's, that's, I, I see everybody nodding their heads because it's an Anselmian thing. Um, but this is really a, a, a great kind of, uh, of pull through, you know, it's like one of these things that I was going to ask, you, you know, you guys have just organically touched on a lot of my questions here, which is, um, which is really cool. Um, but, you know, before I get to, because Jen, you, you touched on one thing that I do want to circle back to, and that's, that's being, having the experience of being a hiring manager, which I think almost all of us have, if, if not all of us have, have sat in that seat. And so, you know, we can give you a little bit of feedback there, but, um, you know, is there any important sort of Anselmian lesson or any kind of tidbit of being a Sainé's grad that, has supported you either, you know, emotionally, mentally, physically, uh, in, as part of your journey? Is there anything um, from CNAs that, that you keep in your back pocket? I'll say for me, I think that CNAs is a really caring community. So when you're making that transition to the working world, I would reflect back on those conversations you had with your professors um, the conversations you had with different mentors, you know, how did you participate in class? How did you function in group projects? And kind of use that as a springboard. I think certain roles, I'll just speak from my own experience in technology. You know, I, I didn't have a tech background. I really didn't have a business background. But I think, I think to your Matt's point and, and others have made this, thinking about things that I did well, ways in which I work best, those are the examples that you can put on a resume. That's what you can talk about in an interview. And I think some folks will probably talk about this. I think being someone who's hired um, professionally, you you want people who can speak competently and confidently about the work that they have done and then where they want to go, right? You're always looking for people who are going to grow, who are going to contribute, right? It's not like you did the job, especially if you weren't at that company or at that organization prior, but really how can you you know, insert yourself into that culture and, and be successful. Well, that's, yeah, Matt, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you know, just to, you know, I think two things that um, Sammy touched on, which was great, was um, for me, the skill set that we took out, you know, from, and, and Chris was in many of my classes, um, so uh, he knows what I'm talking about. But the, the ability to write, you know, is really important. It really, really is. Um, and I remember spending many hours in the library with Chris uh, poring over uh, our, our political science classes, writing, writing uh, those essays. But, you know, that, that from a skill standpoint, I think it's, I think it's uh, being able to write, being able to obviously speak and, and, and engage publicly with people, I think is an important one. I remember taking public speaking classes um, at St. A's, um, you know, critical thinking of course is, is huge. Uh, you know, the other thing for me personally is that, that I took away from St. A's that I've always, uh, you know, made sure I, I hold true to is my, is, you know, personal integrity. I think that's something that, you know, was really, really important. Um, you know, uh, and that's something that, you know, I learned, you know, that's one of the values that was really ingrained in me while I was there for, for, you know, those amazing four years and something that I've kept with me the whole time and continue to try to live up to. Thanks, Matt. Chris or, or Jen, any anything in particular? If not, I'll go ahead. 
Uh, no, just summing up. I mean, when I was thinking about this before, it's like cheesy, but it is completely true about the golden rule and treating others as you like to be treated. Um, it was in our, you know, NYP's respect credo is like the number one thing as well as giving someone the benefit of the doubt. And I think, um, you know, what Sammy said, San Diego's is such a caring, close community that, you know, the, those, that and, and sell me in value was really important to me. And I think it's huge when you're building relationships with people, um, whether it's someone who you're delegating to, or if it's your boss, um, you know, keeping their interest in mind and um, making sure you're, you're empathetic and putting yourself in their shoes, you will build strong relationships. And that's really helped me, um, you know, to develop those um, connections with people that have opened doors down the road. So I think that's a big part of um, what has, you know, led me where I am. I, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more with what everyone is saying. Uh, but just to add, you know, the, the gold standard for, for educators is, is to not just fill buckets, it's to light fires. And, and I think the, the, one of the gifts that, that St. A's has, has given me and, and pretty much I assume everyone on this panel and, and everyone that I know from, from the Hilltop is, is that, is that it, it's really hard to not have that really deep intellectual curiosity after spending four years there. Uh, that that it's it, you're not just being taught what to think but how to think and speaking then as a hiring manager that's what i look for always i want someone who who is is eager and curious and wanting to really grow and and that is just something that that at spending four years uh, at saint a's you you just it just becomes a part of you um, just one last thing, I, the, the short answer when people ask like why I chose where I went to, to go to college, I, I said that's the first place that I saw where people were holding doors for others. Um, that's obviously not the only reason why I went there, but I think that's just a perfect encapsulation of what St. Is, is as a community, because we're always willing to do that for one another. That's awesome, Chris. I, my tidbit is pales in comparison. Um, I, you know, I, I'd love to, to share mine and, that, and that's that um, shared experiences build great bonds. Um, I think, you know, we, we suffer, we all, I, I don't want to say suffer, we all got through four, four semesters of the humanities program, which was um, a, a great uh, bond builder. And as a, uh, as an, as an alumnus, uh, the one lesson that I took is that um, you, you go through this process, um, you go through a process of, of shared experience, increases your relationship with the people with whom you, you travel on that journey. And, and for me, as somebody who started as a very, very low on the totem pole in my industry, it, sharing those experiences with folks as I became their manager, um, and they, then being able to see that I've, I've walked their path um, has really created great bonds for, for me as a manager. And that is an, an, an insomnia lesson that I, I can't, uh, um, couldn't do without. So, um, but uh, I think we've all touched on, on all of these sort of great points. And I, I do wanna circle back to this that Jen and Chris have just talked about. And that's as a hiring manager, what are you looking for? Um, you know, what can somebody do to stand out in this market of, you know, floods of, of, of folks? I think um, just showing straight, you know, off in your interview that um, I would say, you know, building experience is one thing, whether it's volunteering or um, like I mentioned before, picking up um, part-time job, whatever you can do to just show that you're, you know, actively working um, towards, um, you know, that interview. And then I would say we just all said this engagement, um, showing that you want to learn, that you're flexible, open to new experiences, and whether that's saying, um, you know, I'm interested in what committees you have in your organization or leadership opportunities and training others in the future, whatever your interest is, I would say, focus on that and um, 
you know, just show that you're open to new opportunities. I think Sammy or Matt mentioned that um, hiring managers are definitely looking for people who are going to grow within the organization. So um, if you can start there, then it's a good start and we'll show that person that you are interested. That's great feedback. And we actually have our first question. And so I'll, I'll pose the question to, to the group. Um, and that's, uh, you know, what advice would you offer a freshman, a sophomore, or a junior um, as they're, you know, transitioning through their college years? Uh, what would you tell them to do now while they're at St. A's? I think perhaps to prepare them for a career, but also what would you tell them to do at St. A's? I think it's balance, have fun, work hard. And, and uh, you know, make sure that you're taking every opportunity, advantage of every opportunity that you can. Uh, you know, I got some great opportunities when I was there um, to Matt, what you talked about earlier, whenever there was a, an, a you know, I'm looking for help or a volunteer, hands always went up um, and it's, it just opened a lot of doors and exposed, I got exposed to, you know, really incredible opportunities, um, but also make sure you have some fun. Uh, I, I would say um, I would say to to uh, an underclassman is the, very much the same of what Matt is saying, but you know more. Go out and and find somebody who needs help and be the help. Um, be be the I mean it's cliche to say be the change you want to see, um, but go out there and and find uh, find an organization that needs an officer. Find a, find um, you know somebody who needs help within the community. The great part about Saint A's is that that open campus. When you get to the point where the campus is is somewhat open again, we're, we're in the midst of of Gosstown and Penardville and 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 uh, Rock Rim in the the west side of Manchester, um, there are organizations in that city that are looking for really motivated and willing and and sometimes just able bodied folks who uh, are willing to raise their hand and come out there and, and they're not shy to go to St. A's and say we need help but you know sometimes it's difficult for to to be the person who goes out or the first person in your friend group to to join up in an organization like that but but gain the courage go out there and do it because if you spend two hours doing it you'll want to do two hours more i would i would just add that um because i think i think absolutely service and that's something that i that i definitely one of the reasons why i knew that i wanted to work in nonprofits for my career it was because I, I mean it St. A's really continued my love of service. And I know I'm not alone in thinking and 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 really kind of having my world be really be shaped that way. Uh, I would I would just add, and, and I was just talking about this with someone else uh, a few days ago, that I think undergraduate it, the undergraduate education or that portion is really for is really for community. And then your graduate portion of education is for career. And, and I think, and, and what I mean by that is, is that if you're, if, if you're a philosophy major, you can still do a little bit of a post back and then go to, go to medical school. You can be, you, your, your career pathways are completely wide open, especially because you are either a graduate or about to graduate from a liberal arts institution. So, so it's really about, about finding your community, understanding who you are and, and taking that last chance to grow, to really figure things out. Because once you get out into the working world, things get real, really quick. And so you have to take advantage of that and, and explore all sorts of things. I remember I volunteered at the Hillsborough County Department of Corrections because someone asked if I would be interested in doing that. It, it was an, an amazing experience. And it turned out that later on when I was in Los Angeles, I worked on some criminal justice reform issues. And so I was able to draw on something personally that I, I didn't even realize that there would have been a connection to, but it seemed interesting at the time. And so I did it. And so the more you can find those opportunities to build and understand who you want your community to be, I think the more you can really figure it out for your future. Yeah, and just to add to Chris, I think, you know, building your community will help um, with your confidence in general and sort of taking on these joining groups or being part of, um, you know, whatever it is, I play lacrosse and 
Um, those are some of my best friends and just any sort of leadership. Um, uh, it doesn't have to be big at all. I would say joining anything and finding your voice in those comfortable areas is really important because you'll take those the interpersonal skills and the communication skills with you to, to your through your career. Yeah, I think um, Jen hit it on the head. You know, there's always going to be tactical, professional advice, networking that people will say. I, I think what's really important is to use your time in college, your gap year, your internship, whatever phase of life you're in, and learn to really be comfortable with your gut decision, right? Know that only you really know all of the facts and you're facing decisions you never had to face before. So you know, you're, you're learning how to develop those processes of sifting through information and then, you know, taking a step forward. And so for some of us, that's what we lead with our heart. And so we have to lean into our head for others. It's the opposite. You know, we're very cerebral. We have to learn to, to lead into our heart and our passion. And so whatever that is for you, I would just make sure you're taking the time to do that um, and really know that your voice and your thoughts are, you know, they should be guiding you in the next phase of your career and life. You know, Matt, if I can, one of the things that uh, when I was on campus, just to dovetail for what Jen said, what you were saying earlier, um, you know, when you're looking to make that change, right, and you're looking to get involved, it, it may be right on campus. One of the things that we did, uh, Chris, right, we started we, st we started this club soccer program uh, for the for the you know both the men and women's teams, and you know we wound up organizing with uh, you know UConn, Holy Cross, um, we played Dartmouth, we played you know, and it was a really fantastic experience that you know with you know chris myself and a few others built from the ground up and it just you know provided a ton of um that was actually a big resume builder for me because it, it showed leadership it you know it it fostered uh to what sammy was saying before um you know it fostered some really good aspects on a resume that you can go use and sell and, and you know that's a lot, a lot of times that you have to do is just find these like little things that you were able to you know accomplish and you just go sell them. And, uh, and so, you know, whether it's off campus or on campus, definitely looking for those opportunities. Yeah, that's great. That's, uh, I'll never forget the Holy Cross game. Um, but, uh, you know, it's Neither about will getting- I, Matt. Neither will I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, getting into the hunt, that's, that's absolutely it. it. You know, I mean, Chris, you, you sparked my memory of, of I took an, an internship my junior year at the city, uh, the office of city welfare in the city of Manchester. Nobody wanted to work in that program. Nobody wanted to volunteer. Um, the folks at the Amelia Center were like, "Hey, you know, like, does anybody want to do that at all?" Um, and I, you know, that that turned. I draw on that experience regularly, and that increased that that type of uh, experience was eye opening because I was no longer on the college campus, no longer being sheltered. I was dealing with people, dealing with real problems. Um, it makes you grow up a little bit quick, quicker. Um, it makes you see a, a different side of life. And, and I still draw on those experiences today. Um, so, you know, I think as, as you're forming yourself as, as an under, as an undergraduate, as an, an underclassman, there are all of these infinite opportunities that are hidden throughout, you know, throughout your college experience that will really kind of form the way that you think in the future, take advantage, go seek them out, get in the hunt. Um, you know, I, I'm seeing we're, we're kind of getting towards the end of our, our conversation here this evening. So, um, you know, uh, I, I think maybe, um, you know, if anybody has any kind of last few comments, questions, anything that they want to uh, address or really get out there, I have a couple of things that I've noted that I'll kind of recap after I give you guys the opportunity to say, whatever it is you'd like to say. I would just say to anyone here on the call, if you're watching the recording um, and you wanna talk more, I'll extend the offer for myself. Please feel free to reach out, connect on LinkedIn. Um, Sammy Candler, if you wanna reach out to Megan, she can definitely get you my email. And um, you just please know that you have this great community. And so take advantage of you know those of us here today folks on campus, et cetera, the alumni network. We're all here to help you and help St. A's. 
Yeah, I would just say have full confidence in the education that you are receiving at St. A's and I think it's all done us well and have confidence in yourself and um, you know, you'll do great things. It may take time, but that's, that's all. You'll get wherever you're going. So um, I'm going to change, I'm going to change tactics a little bit and, and pass on a piece of advice that was given to me by a former board chair of mine. And um, she, she is probably one of, if not the best networker I've ever met. She actually wrote a book called Meet 100 People. Um, she's phenomenal. And, and the thing that she, she said um, is that find someone who has your dream job and then offer to take them out to coffee and pick their brain. And I've done this. It was, it, was a, it was a great opportunity and it allowed me to talk with someone who I had respected from afar for a long time and, and the work that he did. And, and it worked because most people who, who have that dream job probably don't think about it that way. And so the fact that when you reach out to them and say, you're doing what I, what I want to pour all of my effort into, they're going to feel flattered and they're going to love it. And, and not only are you going to have a great networking opportunity, you'll really understand how to not just get to the next rung in the ladder, but maybe five, six, seven or more rungs and really begin to understand what that, what that pathway can, can develop for you. Uh, I would just say that um, to echo, I think what everyone else has already uh, touched upon, you know, it's a, it's a crazy world. Um, there's a lot of pressure out there. And I, and I think we've all experienced that pressure, uh, especially coming out of, out of college. Um, but, you know, to, I think Jen's point, know that you've got the skills to make it. I mean, St. A's is a great, great institution, a great college. You were walking out of there into this, you know, crazy arena um, with the best skill set that you could possibly have. Uh, so know that you've got it. Uh, know, you know, to Sammy's point earlier, that it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to, you know, tap into this great network. Um, again, I, I wouldn't have had my first job without it. Um, and that's just a fact. So, um, you know, know that we have each other's backs and, and just know that you've got the skills to go make it happen. So... Those are, those are all uh, pretty awesome sentiments. And, and if I had to sum up sort of the, the highlights of what, what we're trying to convey this evening, it, it would be um, network, network, network. Lean in. Your early jobs are about experience and exposure. Don't think just about the job description, think holistically. Be a volunteer. Go forward with faith, confidence, and courage. Pivot. Uh, and your dream job can happen over coffee. So um, with that, uh, Megan, I, I'd like to just thank all of our panelists for their, their time this evening and in, in the run up to prepare for this evening. And um, thank them for, for, uh, for all of their efforts. And I'd like to thank everybody who, who joined us this evening and those who will watch it on a, on a recorded, uh, on a recording. Um, but, uh, with that, you know, Megan, if you have anything else that you'd like to touch on before we, uh, we end the evening, I'd just like to say thank you. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you to you, Matt, and to everybody else, um, that joined us tonight. This was so impressive. And I think that your uh, advice was so insightful. And I know it'll be very appreciated by our students and those are recent grads. So thank you to all of you. And uh, I hope everyone has a great evening. Bye. Thanks.